you totally leaned into the black and Jewish rap thing. You did not <laughs> shy away. You did not shy away from that. Right, 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 right. right. Okay, you say I'm, I'm going to bring up. I'm going to bring over my talents. I'm going to mm -hmm. bring the hood into the shtetl. <laughs> and and you no, made listen. and you made that work. Hey, what's going on? This is Nisim Black, and you're listening to the Nisim Black Show in partnership with the amazing people at Thank You Hashem. Today, our guest is the wonderful Beryl Solomon. Orthodox businessman, movie producer, and of course, the financial guru sharing his secrets of Jewish wealth to the world. Beryl has racked up millions of views, over 135,000 subscribers on his popular YouTube channel, where he talks about Judaism, business, and much more. Please welcome my guest and my friend, Beryl Solomon. All right. So thank you so much, Beryl, for being on with me today. This is like a, uh, you know, uh, long, long time coming. Long time long overdue. Yes. Long overdue. <laughs> long overdue. <laughs> so I'm going to start right at the top. You made a, a, a movie called uh, uh, to, to Jewish Wealth, right? A Secret to yes. Jewish Wealth. And my biggest question for you, what's the big secret? Because I need it for myself also. I need you to also <laughs> give me the secrets, you know? A good uh, question. You, you got to give me the secrets. So, um, look, as far as I, first of all, I love your stuff. I mentioned this before we got on. I think you're doing beautiful things in the world. I'm a big fan. You, I love you dearly. I'm so happy we're finally able to do this. Um, so, you know, thank you for the opportunity. So, yeah. as far as I could see, there's not too many places that talk about secrets to wealth in Judaism, but right. there is one place, and it's about giving charity. And there's right. nothing in this world you're allowed to test Hashem with. You're not allowed right. to say, you know, if I, I don't know, start putting on to fill in, or if I start, you know, lighting Shabbos candles, God, I want you to give me a new car, or I want, you know, whatever that thing might be. Right. Um, but there is something that you're allowed to ask for, which is, God, I want to test you with giving charity. And it says that if you give charity, that God will open up the heavens for you and shower blessings upon you. I'd bleed die. Right. So, right. so I started doing this. Um, I'd say probably five, six years ago when I first started my business, yeah. I was giving in my family, when I was working in my family's business, I would give about 18,000 bucks a year to, to charity. And it's, it's what I owed. That was my, you know, my sir. That's, that's what I owed. That was your and 10%. Yeah, yeah, ten percent, maybe a little bit more, but you know that's more or less what I owed. Mm -hmm. And then, I, and then I, the second, and then when I went down on my own, my rabbi and his and his son come to my office and they ask me, and I figured this year they're going to go easy on me, you know, when they're asking me for their pledge for the upcoming year because they knew I was starting out and fresh. Mm -hmm. And they said, "Don't worry, we're not going to ask you for eighteen thousand bucks. We're going to ask you for thirty six thousand dollars." <laughs> and um, it's a, it, you know only a chutzpah, chutzpah that a chabad rabbi could have, you know. Yeah, and, you can't test the shim, but they can contest test you. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so I got I got all nervous. The world froze in front of me. The rabbis froze in front of me. I was just me, myself, and a shem. And I said, "Look, it's your problem. It's not my problem." Okay, right. so I'm going to say yes, and you do what you have to do to make sure that it happens. Mm. A month before the end of that year, I ended up writing him his last check for the 36 G's. Wow. Thank God. Wow. So in the first wow. year of business, I, I, I did it. The next year, I did 54. The next year, 72. The year after that, 170. Uh, sorry, 100. The year after that, 150. Then And then last year, I pledged a quarter of a million bucks. Wow. wow. And wow. I, wow. with Hashem's help, fulfilled every last penny of it. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Okay, By the so way, it doesn't mean... Doesn't mean that there's not struggles. Doesn't mean it doesn't require a tremendous amount of emuna and bitachan. And it doesn't right. mean that it's raining from heaven. I still have to work my butt off every single day. Right, right, right. I mean, well, that's that's sort of baked into our relationship with Hashem. That's the way Hashem deals with us. I always say too, and the more aware of Hashem that a person is, you 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 get no shortcuts. No matter what, no matter what, what the person's matzliach in his business, no matter what he yeah. what he has, he sees a certain shuffle. Once the person's cognizant that the, that there's a shim and a shim is manhig the world, that a shim runs the world, 
You don't yes. get a chance to 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 take a vacation. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. You still gotta yes. have to dive in. You still have to be. I don't know exactly what the shortage of it is. I think it was some midrash or something like that. But I remember years ago, uh, Rav Arush was talking about. It. He was talking about Avram Avinu was wealthy. It's Are you a breast lover, by the way? Officially I'm breast lover. I'm officially, officially breast lover. I'm wow. officially a breast lover. You wear the gold. Uh, the gold Beckish <laughs> on, on, on Shabbos? No, no, no. I'm not you were showing me. Those are you were showing me, but uh, uh-huh. uh breast lovers. Now, but what's interesting about it is, is that he talked about over there is that the Avot, even though they had money, they were wealthy, they were still praying to Hashem for everything. Mm. For every single thing that they that they could have bought with their own money. We don't really think about it, right? We don't think about that 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 even though I have the money to do these things, who says that I'm going to actually accomplish anything? It's only Hashem. Only Hashem. You can have all the money in the world. And uh, like the one guy who locked himself inside of his safe, you know what I mean, with all his money. And, sure. and, and Hashem, he died. you can have all the money in the world. But Hashem is still mining. And if you take that out, then, uh, you know, then you, 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 you're bound to struggle. So that's, that's yes. amazing to know that you can test Hashem on Parnassa. Yes. To the Parnassa. It's a real thing. Ubachanuni Nabazos. That's the that's the Pasuk. That's, that's the Pasuk. Right, right. No can doubt I, about can it. Can I ask you a question? I don't want to hijack your what? show, but could I ask you? Of course. You, yeah? Of course yeah. you can. Okay, okay, so you like, um, you know, you blew up really. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but you and I were hosting a C team together six years ago. Your your wife had given birth, yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> she let you, and she let you come speak. I don't know how she, you know, I think she had just given birth, or even while you were there. No, it was while I was there. She was while you were there before I left, and right. I said I'm not going. She said you're going. I said wow. no, I'm not going. It wow. wasn't like, and I'm telling you, it was really for the hashpa. Got C teens knows, and this is not on them. They didn't. It wasn't like I was. It was a major check or anything like that for me. I was literally going to be. By the way, they pay you because they never paid me. You're better than the what I'd say is I was, I, I mean, it depends on what you call pay. I, the truth is, is that I was really going to be my shpia. My wife is very supportive of my mission. And I sure. said to her, I said, hon, I'm staying. There's no way I'm going. You're pregnant. I'm not. She sure. was, you know, having contractions like crazy. And I said, and she says, no, you're going. They need you. I'll be fine. You go. Wow. Wow. And so. Uh, that's how that happened. I just want to clear my name so nobody thinks I just like was like I'm out of here. But go ahead, <laughs> finish with the question. I, look, the the listeners who are probably listening to this are probably more amazed than anything that you were there. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, my question too is, we were there, um, and you were barely, you know, you were just coming up at that time, mm-hmm. just coming up. And one thing that I've noticed about musicians and artists they actually have the most fame out of anybody i'm not sure exactly why i think because listening there's something you know nobody watches a video eight times but you'll listen to a song 40 times right and you know it's very rare that you'll see an actor become a musician right but it's very common to see musicians become actors as you know your your program that i don't know if you could talk about or you can't but yeah yeah for sure sure. i know i know what's up um (laughs) so you've become very famous and you know how do you deal with that i think the, again i i guess you could say i'm a i'm a b-list celebrity in the jewish world um but i i don't think i don't think that classes, the, the audience classes i don't think that the fame that a artist has is comparable to let's say me who is like Influence a business you. teacher yeah so so how do you deal with that well the first thing is is that one of the, the, the biggest powers I, I would say that I have is that I have an amazing wife. Mm-hmm. I have, a, you know, I have seven children. Wow. I, have a, I, have a, I have a best friend who's Mama Shad Sadiq, who's an Ish Emis, Ish Kash. We I was actually going to have, I was actually going to ask you, do you have friends? Yeah, for sure. For sure. My yeah. best friend, my guy together it was me, my wife. My yeah. wife's sister is married to my best friend since kindergarten. Your wife's People, sister is married to your best friend. By the way, the reason why I asked the question is because, you know, it's lonely at the top. You know, famous right. people, it's it's hard for them to, it's hard for people to identify with them. It's, you know. No doubt about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think yeah. the biggest thing is is having that support group that you need people in your life that never allows you to feel like a celebrity. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I think yeah. that's so crucial and so important. I think the biggest problem with people becomes, and I've seen a lot of them. I'm, 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 I'm from Seattle. 
I grew up, I'm not going to say who I grew up with, but I've seen a lot of people, you know, become celebrities over the years, either that and from the, my former years in the music entertainment industry. The biggest problem with most people is they usually are not very careful to keep people in their lives that will not allow them to feel like a celebrity. That's, right. That's, that's one of the main down to earth answers. And number two mm -hmm. is you mentioned it before. I'm a breast lover. I can't go without, you know, he to do to have to talk to Hashem every single day. I have that grounding right. of that. I have to speak to Hashem every single day. I try to at least, at least to spend one hour every day. No. Yeah. Oh, you, spent, sure, you know, I, I became from through breast love. Oh, really? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, did I became it. from through Chabad. So. That's so funny. That's so funny. That's so funny. <laughs> That's, it's very, very interesting. Uh, so because of that, that I think that those are the things that really keep me grounded more than anything else. But sure. in the trepidation of 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 losing that, losing that Kesha to Hashem, losing that closeness to God, that for me is a real fear to me. Sure. Uh, well, you know, you mentioned this, this, this show, the HBO show. And God bless them. Everything has been great. My negotiations happened very, very good. Shout out to my lawyer, Fred Tachik, who was also a from Jew. I would not do a deal unless I had a from Jew, or, you know, going over and, and, and negotiating. Sure. My contract. So what is that? That's a sh that's a show. That's a series. It's a movie. It's a show. It's a, it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a comedy series based on my drama comedy series based on my life story. Well, I, and you're acting, I was, you're I was acting, approached you're... by a few different people, actually. I was approached by Queen Latifah. Uh, a couple years ago, around around a little bit before that time, Liam Robinson was doing one on me, and then there was another com production company at Netflix, and then Sally Richardson reached out with her overall HBO. We decided to go with comedy just because I felt like it would have been a little bit easier to. I mean, because when it comes to reality and when it comes to a, a drama, um, it, it you know you have to have drama. You Is it scripted, I'm... by the way, or it's scripted? It's, it's scripted. It's Actually, you're going to be acting. You're going to be acting. acting. I'm not saying anything about it yet. Yeah. That, that, that we're going too deep. We're going too deep. Going too deep. We'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. They, they know what they have to do react in it. So, but even even with that though, my my thing is like the the amount of content that's been going out on the Orthodox world, and this is even brings it back to you, right? So doing you know the secret secret to Jewish wealth, and and yeah. I'm sure you're busy with other things as we talked before. I know you're busy with other things, so. I think we have we we somewhat have an achray. Some of those who are who are not stuck, and and I wouldn't say stuck. I wouldn't say those of us who who feel a, a different tafki, not a better or a bigger or or, or lesser than even tafki than being stuck in uh, sitting in the base midrash right mm -hmm. which i also enjoy doing also too i travel i tour a lot but people know they'll tell you here my shul they come i'm they know when i'm here and when i'm not here because when i am here i have my corner my base midrash I have by the way in your shul corner. do people look at you as a regular guy or you're a famous I like a regular black. guy most of my shul are are haredi hasidish guys uh, they, they couldn't care less they they know who I am, but it's not like that. I, I don't think I'm on uh, too many of their playlists. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but they, but but they love me, have a major uh, you know respect and cover for me, and and I have a place at home. My kids love going to shul even. Sure, so sure, so sure. Brooklyn Shim, we have we have that place, and that's the type of place I want to be at. That's why it's been very tough for me uh, here to find a place. Also, too, you want to find a place where you're not too much a celebrity. Then you have to find a place where they're not anti you. You understand also too. So that's so I found I think. I found that perfect balance for me, so which I think is very, very important. Beautiful. So, in terms of in terms of content, what you're doing right now, did you think that it was yeah. something that's important? Like, for instance, what you're doing right now, specifically on Jewish wealth, it's like it's not just you just uh, you, you're like just putting out content like this is information. You're actually combating a lot of different uh, what, what categorizes sim uh, as as a as a, a conspiracy theories even. On, let on, me tell you. Let well. me tell you where it came from. Okay. Let me tell you the. You're Wait. gonna appreciate this because you're you're smart at marketing, so you'll appreciate okay. this. Mm -hmm. When Kanye West started railing against the Jewish community, right? Who was he really attacking? I mean, the he was really, really attacking non-religious Jews in absolutely. It was non-religious Jews he in wasn't, Hollywood. He talking about Hebron Borough Park and Williams right. And, Although you know those sorry. are Eden also, and we love them too, right. and we want to bring them closer, but really, absolutely. but. At least at face value, he was hitting Jewish business people. Absolutely. And in a certain sense, I'm like the de facto <laughs> Jewish business guy. Okay. <laughs> so I put out, you know, online at least. Um, so I put out 
a few videos in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It's anti-Semitism and it's ba 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 and how dare he and I used to love him, which I used to mm-hmm. love him and back right. in the day. I mean right. me too. Um right, yeah. I mean, and... the moment that he came out, I was literally it was sukkah's time, I remember. And I was sitting inside my sukkah and I, I don't know, I just woke up and Kanye hit my head. Maybe because he said whatever he said. And I was talking to my brother in law who also happens to be my producer, produced a lot of my, my biggest songs. Sure. And we were just talking about the influence that Kanye had on us while we were up and coming listening oh, wow. to and we were started reminiscing about these records and trying to figure out like how he Thought, did certain things inside of songs that we were listening to and just like man it was genius stuff and i'm i'm telling you hours later wow i got a message like kanye goes hey why you know i'm like what happened what happened so <laughs> we about it. this was that was like that's how it hit me literally wow wow so so that's fun that's the, that type of stuff happens all the time to me i'm telling you it's weird anyways where was i i was um he was saying so, that so he starts railing against yeah. Jewish business people. I'm like the right. de facto online Jewish business dude. Mm-hmm. And I started making these videos anti Semitism. The comments were so disgusting. It was so scary. It was so right. it was so angry. It was so hateful. It was so and I and I said and I watched a video from the Lubavitcher Rebbe who talks about how to deal with anti Semitism. Mm-hmm. And he said that when you call an anti-Semite an anti-Semite, it only reinforces who he is. Mm-hmm. And now he has to prove to you that he is an anti-Semite. He said the <laughs> true he said the true way to show an anti-Semite, the true way to deal with anti-Semitism is through education and building bridges. Mm-hmm. So I made this video called 10 Jewish Business Secrets. Mm-hmm. And it start the video started off. I put on TikTok. The video started off saying, "I know that what 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 Kanye West said is I don't see it as anti-Semitism. I see it. He's telling the truth. Jews are good at business. Let me explain to you ten reasons why. And mm-hmm. it was every and it was everything from giving charity to taking care of your community to teaching your ch- children how to make a living to being <laughs> honest in business to taking one day off a week to you know all right. the all the good stuff right right the video and and whatever I posted it I wasn't thinking too much I picked up my phone five minutes later it had twenty six thousand views on oh TikTok. My. Ten minutes oh later, God. after that, it had, was at a hundred thousand views. An hour, we were at a million views. The thing oh went God. viral in the whole world. It got shared over a hundred thousand times. It got millions and millions and millions of views. The thing went freaking viral. Wow! Wow! And wow. I just and I just continued. Le- and the comments were so nice. They were so correct. They were so sweet. Mm-hmm. People saying, "Hi, I'm Arab and I'm Muslim, and I have to tell you, I really respected com. I really respect the Jewish way." Christians saying, "Wow, I wish we were taught this." And da 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 da. I wish Christians support each other. And then I just sort of doubled down on this Jewish business secrets, and mm-hmm. just started going in that direction. And instead of running away from that. I mm-hmm. sort of embraced it. Right. The world the world doesn't want a weak Jew because they know we're Absolutely. not weak. When Absolutely. we pl- right, when we play victim, the mm-hmm. world can't stand that. It's like Absolutely. the world is saying you're the king. Don't play don't play, don't play victim with us. That's mm-hmm. like the king. That's like nobody wants to see Lahavdale Donald Trump playing victim, okay? Right. <laughs> um whatever. I don't want to piss off some of our uh, piss off some of our <laughs> listeners, but nobody wants to see the king playing right. victim he's not they want to see the king playing the king right and the second Absolutely. that i lead into that bang i exploded right it's amazing because it it's i mean from a marketing perspective of course it and was can, great. can, can i tell you better. what you do what you did you totally uh-huh. leaned into the black and jewish rap thing you did not shy <laughs> away you did not shy away from that right 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 okay you <laughs> say I, i'm gonna bring up o- i'm gonna bring over my talents i'm gonna mm-hmm. bring the hood into the shtetl <laughs> and and you no, made listen this you is made that so work important. this is so important because what people you, you fail to realize like i say all the time I, i'll say like this l- let me flip this around let's let's talk about the black side of what kanye was saying right and yeah. it includes everything what you just said about me as well for years it's it's looked down upon even in the black community 
oh, well, we're good at, uh, you know, you, you know, we pay, we're either going to make it out of the hood by playing basketball, uh, by singing or something of that. But they 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 won't let us become, you know, real businessmen and company owners and all these other things, even though that we know that's been debunked. We have Oprah's and Jay-Z's and other people, whatever that whatever the case is. However, the truth is, I look at it this way and, it, and some things are very clear. And and I think the Chovas Alavovas talks about the duty of the heart also talks about how each person has to know that Hashem created a person, an individual with a certain nature. If you have a certain desire and pull towards certain things because Hashem created you that way, just like he did with the animal kingdom, and the way that they are attracted to a certain way, they're built in a certain way to protect them from the things they need to protect them from. And they have certain desires and their natural instincts pull them towards a certain type of food, a certain type of shelter. And these things are all germane to the way that these things were created. And this is what protects them in their life. And he said, and, and it brings over there in the same way that it is by them as by us, that we have a tafki to do. We have a purpose to do. Hashem gave us talents and things that we're supposed to do. And whether things are up or they're down, was not enough. He said, over there, it's, wow. it's a wow. in our muna even somewhat to, to think that, oh, everything's just decided on Rosh Hashanah. So I'll just do whatever, whatever, you know, whatever is just going to come to me anyway. No, you have to find your thing. And I'm setting that up to say that who cares if in the black community, you're, you're going to make it out of the hood with basketball or football or with singing that, or acting, whatever. If you're talented as something, do it. I went to a school, we were last in test scores. We wow. were last in, 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 in education in the whole entire state. But we wow. were number one in the country in basketball. Now, no oh, doubt yeah? about it. We didn't have, yes, number one in the country. Now, Nate Robinson was on our team. Nate Robinson, the Roderick Logic Twins, the Terrence Williams. We had, wow. we, had, we had a squad, right? This is the home of where Jamal Crawford had graduated a few years before that. But it was definitely Jamal Crawford's class that got us into that uh, that that spotlight, right? Wow. So <laughs> what happened is, is what we saw after that was that even though we didn't have as much textbooks and that we weren't interested anyway, but if we would have had... <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm being straight up with you. I wasn't interested anyway. Who cared about Shakespeare or anything like that? But when, if it came to performing arts and when it came to, um, you know, sports, we excelled in those things. Sure. So why not build an education system surrounding our gifts and our talents that we give I to love the that. world? Yeah, that's what everybody else says. I love so that. So if you're good at something, own up on what you're good in. Create I love the that. Business, what, you know what I'm saying? Express it. So no difference in that. Jews are good at business. So do business. It, it, don't don't shy away from it because you know what Kanye West is saying. It do business. So I think what it is is I think until you embrace yourself, you'll never accomplish or do what you're supposed to be doing here in this world until you embrace all of you. That's what I believe. So let me ask you a question. You mentioned the black community. Two questions: A, do you still feel a connection to the black community? And B, do they feel a connection to you? You know what? It's interesting. Because overall, I, I do feel. A, By the a, way, I'm asking you some good questions. You are these asking are some, me some good questions. These are, maybe, these are some juicy know, questions. What podcast are we doing now? Mind or yours? <laughs> it's okay. Anyway, we'll take it. I'll take it. I enjoy being asked the questions. As long as you let me ask the question after. 100%. So By taking, the way, I'm a complete I, open book. Completely. Uh, ask me anything. I'm taking, I'm taking it. Okay. So I would say definitely myself, I still feel very uh, connected, I would say, to, um, to black people. I would love to interview, by the way, for my people, for uh -huh. my, because I have, I probably have a hundred thousand black followers because of the Kanye West deal. Wow. Wow. It's I amazing. blew up. I blew up from, I from, believe that, whole, from that whole I thing. Said, I saw it. We see, we all see, I witnessed it. Yeah. 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 So, okay. I would Sorry, say, go ahead. I still feel a connection. I still feel a connection to the black community. If I told you I felt a, a connection to black culture, I don't feel a connection to black culture. And what I mean by black culture, I'm talking about new black culture, right? The the culture even of that which I grew up in, right? And I separate the two. Uh, sure. The case in point, you know, I just had a, <clears throat> a certain issue um, recently. Uh, I will say I, I got to be as discreet as I can. You know, it was it was a government situation. It wasn't nothing. I wasn't in trouble or anything like that. And I had to go to one of the embassies and... Um, and and my it it just worked out 
that you know I I, I encountered some resistance. Um, By the way, what, was it when you were on your way to Panama? You were supposed to no, come No, wasn't. Was, I was on the way to. Panama. I'm in Panama. You were supposed oh, yeah, to be okay. here a couple months ago. <laughs> you're, right, you're right. You're right. Pan Panama keeps coming up. It's haunting me. Trust me. Trust me. I wanted to be there so bad. I still want Next to be time. there. Next time. Next time. What's interesting is, is that I I was reaching some resistance. I don't think it was due at all. I'm not going to tell you it was because of my color or anything like that. Uh, and my celebrity definitely didn't get me anywhere. Nobody in that government building knew who I was, except for when I walked out, there was one employee that was a sister. She was black. <clears throat> and it's just these, it's just the thing. I have it also too, when, when I see you, especially when you're driving through, I'm just be straight up Palestinian territories. And the first thing you see, when you see a yarmulke, you're like, Ah, thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. You know, <laughs> you have this thing sometimes as black people. We see another black person you're just like, okay, there go. You know, I'm saying there's somebody, you know, you still feel a certain Keshe connection. Interesting. Very interesting. She worked there. I talked to her, explained my problem, and she went in and got it done. She went in and got it done, you know. Wow. So there is a wow. certain connection you have still. I still feel to the black community, but not black culture, the shoot 'em up culture, gang culture, what we've become and what how we're being presented um, in the media. I feel absolutely no connection to it. Wow. I mean, but there, there, there are the but but what real black culture was, which which was all about family, which was about economic growth, empowering our communities, for sure. I got, Absolutely. I got, sh I got shivers for a lot of that. By the way, no, um, thank, you. thank you. Super, 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 super stuff. So curious, such a peek into a culture that we don't usually get to peek into from a perspective that we definitely don't get to see it from. Likewise, um, you're doing also too. So you, let me ask you a question. You're doing all of this now. You're doing everything you're doing in terms of of business of what you're doing is so beautiful because it's, it's really mama she's a kid a shim because you're doing it in the sense of discussing it according to the Jewish tradition, our Masorah, right? Yes. It's not like you're just pulling this stuff out of your hat. While you're introducing people to these tips, you're opening the world into 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 Judaism. It's yes. not just about the by the by the family. People think they're coming from one thing, they're in, they're getting they're getting something different. Do you feel like you're having a very I would say tangible, you're seeing tangible results on what you're doing for businesses, for people and, and 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 is that bringing them to a certain type of affinity towards Jewish people because of what you're doing? Look, you know, I um, I hope so. Right. I, I, I so we all most, <laughs> right. I, I hope so. Most people, again, when when the Kanye West thing was going was going on, and I was I had really taken to heart what the Lubavitcher had said about building bridges with, he was actually speaking specifically about the black community. I don't know if you remember the riots that were happening in, um, in what's it called in crown Heights. There was a, there was a, there was an incident where um, there was a Jewish man who hit a, a black child and killed him with a car. And there was riots in crown Heights and the communities were just going at each other. And, right. And the, that was when the Rebbe gave his advice to the way to combat is through building bridges and uh, building on commonalities. Mm -hmm. And um, and I remember I would join these talks and get invited to these talks at that specific time, which was let's say three four months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would join these talks, and a lot of times this was the first time people had ever seen a Jew. So we were talking about at this point, talking about results. What are you seeing business-wise? What do you feel like you, you, you've been able yeah, so to, not only that question. through the business, but also through you exposing Judaism to the world? Great question. So first of all, everybody always asks me, like, what do you get from it? And I can't say that anybody sends me signed contracts or sends me money in the mail from my stuff, okay? <laughs> sure. But there is there is a certain advantage to you walking in to a conference and everybody knows your name. Right. There is a certain advantage to you want to go raise money for real estate. People that you never met in your whole life, they followed you for six years. They trust you, even mm -hmm. though that's the first time you're meeting them. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a certain repute. You know, why do people trust Starbucks, let's say? Because they know that they're latte is going to be the same latte in Montreal as it is in New York, it is in Israel, as it is in Afghanistan, right. if there right. is. Um, so there's a certain brand 
mm -hmm. um, power. My new project that I'm working on with Hashem Self, which I'm very excited about, um, mm -hmm. which I haven't been speaking about at all. I'm working on a movie, full feature film, $2 million budget, mm -hmm. actors and the whole nine yards is what I'm working with Saul on, Saul Blinkoff. He's the, I was gonna he's the writer. I going to ask you about it, but whatever. Okay, whatever. Yeah, he's the writer. <laughs> he's a writer. Yeah. You uh -huh. ready for this? It's yeah. called Mashiach. Ooh, it's wow. a movie that Mashiach came. No. Yeah, it's a movie about a family in Brooklyn uh -huh. that accidentally triggers a sequence of events mm -hmm. that accidentally brings the Mashiach. <laughs> uh, and it follows their journey from Brooklyn to ultimately into Eretz Israel to go meet, to go see the Mashiach. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I'm Saul's so writing it, and he's he, and he he's the best. Saul's amazing. Saul's amazing. I'm working on something with Saul also as well. As you mentioned, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not able to talk about it yet. But yeah, Saul's. Uh, he's, he's the guy's brilliant. He's amazing. Got to have him on next also. Okay, so uh, speaking of movies, let's talk about uh, your response to unorthodox. Orthodox. This is this is really uh, this is really probably the first time I'd ever heard of you. Right? Was that response? And it seems like. It's sort of a, I wouldn't say your shtick is, but I, it looks like it's definitely your way to sort of take things head on, when I, which I enjoy, is that we're not running from the problems, we're confronting these problems. We're coming, we're coming straight, at, straight ahead of it. We're not going to hide behind, you know what I'm saying, Gara? I actually, do, I actually didn't even realize that until you mentioned that, and thank you for pointing that out. I didn't make mm -hmm. that connection. I didn't see that pattern. No, I'm telling you. It's, I'm seeing this. I, oh. I, pre I appreciate that. Yeah, so um, that was a film that, you know, um, Unorthodox had come out. The original, can I tell you something? My time, I don't know if you ever had, I don't know if you ever experienced good timing. Yeah. I, I don't know if I've ever been in the right place at the right time. Yeah, for that movie. I definitely, I, I have timing a lot of times on the opposite. I'm usually doing the wrong thing at the <laughs> wrong time, but I do know about timing. <laughs> okay, ahead. so I definitely identify with that. I don't think I've ever been in the right place at the right time, <laughs> except for there. Right. So the movie Unorthodox came out. Mm -hmm. The first one about Deborah, whatever her story on Netflix, the 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 series, or I think right. it was a movie. I think it was a series, whatever. Yeah. And it was during the pandemic, and I volunteer at my old high school every day mm -hmm. in Montreal, or I used to. I'm, I I live in Panama now, but. Mm -hmm. And one of the teachers, and, and I volunteered doing a minion there with the non-religious boys in the morning. And during the pandemic, religious Jews were being like literally persecuted. I don't know around the rest of the world, but in Montreal, they were being persecuted that they were the spreader. They were the super spreaders, which today you see is so, right. it's so, it's so stupid Garbage. and so wrong and so Garbage. disgusting for so many reasons. Garbage. Um, and this lady posted on her she posted an ad for, you know, the trailer for unorthodox. Mm -hmm. um, and she said, this is exactly what we need right now. And not like, <laughs> oh, this is what we need right now. This is exactly what we need right now. Right. And I remember being so upset about it because my parents are not orthodox yet. They're not religious yet. Mm -hmm. God willing, they will be. And um, they're influenced by this, by this garbage. Okay, wow. so here's another thing against us at the wrong time. Right. So I had I had this thing in my head to do this movie against that movie, Unorthodox. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened was that I was able to gain a little bit of traction, and a couple, like a year and a half later, a super wealthy guy in Montreal heard me telling my story, and he said, "You know what? Why don't we make a movie about this?" And I said, "Well, I need a, you know I, I need a funder." He says, "Do you have one?" And I said, "I think I'm talking to him." He wrote me a check on the spot for 50 G's to help me get my feet off the ground. Wow. And I started production of the movie, which took almost a year. In the middle of the production for the movie called Orthodox, My Unorthodox Life mm. came out by Julia Hart. Wow. So everyone thought that I was like fighting <laughs> this movie and I was like in the right place <laughs> head on. Little did they know I was fighting the one that came out two years ago. Right, right, right. So right, it right. so and my launch date was like three weeks after, after. The, <laughs> the second unorthodox, my unorthodox life launch date. 
Wow, wow, wow. So, so I was in the right place at the right time. <clears throat> That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and in terms of in terms of distribution, how did you how did you work out distribution and different things like so that? I, 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 re- I reached out to I uh-huh. reached out to everybody I could at mm-hmm. that time. Not that I'm anybody now, but at that time I was relatively unknown. I had mm-hmm. a very small network, and I shopped it around to as many people as I could. Um, I was working on a deal to get it into movie theaters. Um, there's a guy in Montreal. His last name was Guzo. He owns a whole whack of theaters all over Canada and all over the States, particularly in New York. And he really wanted to, to get it into his movie theaters and to from there to keep on pushing it up the channels. You know, once a movie goes into theaters, it gives it a lot of credibility. Drake is in the movie because I don't know if you had a chance to see it, but um, did you, by the way? No, I didn't see all of it. I didn't see Drake for sure. Nobody okay. Told me that Drake, okay. Was in Drake, it. Drake is in the film because I have I seen, footage of it. I him. seen clips and I seen clips and pieces of it. And then okay. I also had seen the interview. I think it was you and your wife also too. Sure. You, yeah. So Drake is in the film because he, um, because I was doing business with him when I was in the nightclub business. Right. So it, it had, the film had weight and it was in the right place at the right time. But in terms of the distribution, I would have needed to have waited six months for it to play out the movie theater realm. And by my calculation, I, I didn't think that more than, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people were going to see it in the movie theaters. Mm-hmm. And right. I had to get that thing out now, right? meaning to combat that wave. Mm-hmm. So I just, I threw it up on my social, on my social media mm-hmm. at that time. I probably had 10,000 Instagram followers. I probably had, 2000 YouTube followers and the mm-hmm. thing ended up blowing up almost 600,000 views on YouTube within two months, wow. Instagram, almost a hundred thousand views within, within a couple of days. It just, wow. it just started going, it just started, you know, exploding, um, wow. right place at the right time. Wow. So definitely reward. I always say this, you try to do the right thing. You always see success. And that's what I, yeah. that's what I've always seen. My greatest success always comes when I feel like, like I said before, when I'm doing what my soul was put here to do, then I yeah. see that I have, I have my greatest success. It doesn't mean you don't have challenges, but you definitely it's a it's a it's a different. Um, the challenges are different because you have more oomph to keep going because you believe in what it is that you're fighting. Yes, you believe in what yes. It is that you're doing so. No doubt yes. about it. No doubt they about would it. call that. They would call that the why. What's your why oh. in the business world? That's your why in the business. See, you're turning me, you're turning me on to all these different the business techniques. I'm have to get yeah. I'm have to join the next webinar. Uh, I def, definitely need some help with some tips. By the way, you're a good businessman. You're in the business of Nissan Black, which is an interesting business to be in. No, that's true. That's true. That's true. So I think it's the only one I know how to do well. But um, <laughs> so I'm curious to ask you: Do you have any views as we're we're going into you know talking about the entertainment? You have any views on the Jewish matchmaker? Like this is the new show. Everybody's talking yeah. about everybody's yeah. funny. Like I yeah. think we can breathe. Let's keep watching a few episodes, but I think we can breathe. This is what everybody's been telling me. I, I'll be <laughs> very honest with you. I this I've seen nothing of. I haven't seen seen it at all yet. Everybody keeps telling me to watch it. I'm trying to figure out if and my manager even telling me you, you gotta watch it. It's like how you have me on tour every almost every day of the week. And right. I'm not right. doing podcasts. Right. So right. Uh, but I'd like to know what your view of it is. Sure. Thank God I have not watched it. I also have no time, uh, mm-hmm. although everybody is asking me to watch it. And mm-hmm. once I heard that it was, let's call it part of, okay? It's not okay. detrimental to Jews. Right. Um, from what I understand, it actually cast us in kind of a cute light, okay? It's called, I still don't think it, you know, anybody's learning Torah from it, let's say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But once I, w- I was told that it was part of, it doesn't need it doesn't need me at that point yeah. meaning yeah. i would have gotten involved if it would have been another you know hit piece on the jews right. and i would have done what i had to do right so now that i know that it's not i don't have to waste my time watching it if that makes sense got it got but it. from what i understand kolakova to her because it sounds like she made actually a kiddush hashem and mm-hmm. she did a good job 
Right. And um, as much as I hate to say it, call a couple to Netflix for, in, you know, not painting us as, 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 as demons as you always do. So, right, 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 right. So tell me what's next for you. Um, apart from the movie, you already told yeah. me about that. What else is next? Yeah. What else can we expect? Yeah. So I, uh, I'm working, I, I just launched a new division of our business um, mm -hmm. about six months ago, which is uh, executive recruiting, which we're oh. pushing hard. Um, so I'm pushing all fronts of my business hard. You know, money is an important thing to me and to my family and to my community and to my, I don't know, you know, it's, you know, you mentioned being tied to you, whatever you do has to be tied to your essence. I don't right. mind. I don't mind digging a hole if I had to dig a hole to make my living, because I know that I give a lot of sadaka. So right. the digging the hole the proverbial hole has meaning to me. Right. So really just going hard on my businesses. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I just set up a new uh, learning uh, schedule. I, I, I learn every morning and now I made a schedule to learn every night, for, you know, between five thirty and six mm -hmm. when I come home from work. So that's mm -hmm. a new thing. You know, I have all these, I sat down with all my goals, big goals, buy a thousand apartments, uh, produce a movie about Mashiach, uh, build my business to uh, $10 million. Uh, I said, mm -hmm. and I looked at my list. I said, where's my goals about learning? <laughs> I, I have all these big goals, but when it comes to learning, there's no goals. So I set those goals. And um, so those are very important. Those are very, very important. important. Very important. Very important. It's, yeah. the, it's, it's the most important. Those are the, those are what we call the big rocks. I heard one time, just closing. I heard one time, beautiful Marshall. I I, I don't know if you ever heard it. I know how famous it is, but I remember this guy said this to me in sure. He said that there was a you know such a sea poor that a person came to a guy who was on the beach. He told him, he says, "Can you fit all of these in it? The rocks, the sand, the pebbles, all of it. Can you fit it?" fit it all inside of this container so the guy goes in he puts in the sand he does you know smart i'm gonna go from the smallest to the biggest right so he starts with the sand throws in a few stones some pebbles and all that and then he starts to put the big rocks he sees he doesn't have room there's no mm. room to fit, it, to fit it all in mm. so he tells him take it out he says no start with the big rocks he put the big wow. rocks in then he put in the pebbles then he put in the small and then all in the end he put the sand he was able to fit everything in there and he told him he says listen if you start with the big rocks what's the big rocks torah a vote is Hashem, closest to shim if you find where to put that in then you'll be able to put in every single thing else in your life which is a small sin we should all about we should both be zocher to prioritize and put a shim first and for sure about everything else is going to come oh well, this is the biggest secret to jewish wealth right <laughs> very rich very well very well said Nisim, it was a pleasure and pleasure. Uh, big pleasure uh, i'm so happy you came on yeah yeah let's do this first again okay many, first of many next time yeah i want to have you i want to have you okay i'm looking forward looking forward okay Thank brother you. have a good one you will